crowd waits tense. Who'll win? Let them fight. Today's movies follow in the long line of beef movies that attract audiences not with their star power or clever trailers, but with a killer title. Get ready for a Mexican twist on the 1950s monster craze as we explore a little-known series starring a bandaged baddie. While the United States and Japan were preoccupied with introducing the world to the terrors of radiation, Mexico was content putting their own spin on classic monsters made famous in the 30s. A slew of vampire, werewolf, and mummy movies all came about, including today's first entry, The Robot vs. The Aztec Mummy. That's right, today we're doing a Verses of the Verses, featuring movies that include an in-universe monster brawl, free of charge. The Robot vs. The Aztec Mummy upholds the long-standing tradition of bringing solo monsters together for a fight. Like the great Godzilla before him, The Aztec Mummy actually has his own origin movie, with The Robot vs. The Aztec Mummy being the third in the Aztec Mummy series. Choosing this movie for the name, I skipped the first two, and boy was it a good idea. Like many movies before the creation of home video, RVA spends a lot of time retelling this series' events up to the present. This has the unfortunate side effect of making the first half hour of this movie terribly complicated and hard to follow. I don't know why movies feel the need to do this, I'm fairly confident that no one was entirely invested in the series up to this point. Also, this weird exposition scene doesn't make any sense in-universe either. Our narrator, Dr. Almada, recounts the events of the first two movies as a story to a group of people that already lived through it, despite having urgent news to deliver. If I had an experience with a reanimated Aztec mummy, I sure wouldn't need help remembering it, and would probably be more interested in the news about the mummy's return. Anyway, here's the rundown of the first two movies, in one-tenth of the time I might add. Dr. Almada hypnotizes a girl called Flor as part of an investigation and causes her to relive her past life as the Aztec princess, Zochi. This leads the pair and their friends to the Tomb of the Aztecs, where a cursed neckplate and bracelet containing a hidden treasure map are hidden. Taking these items causes the mummy Popoca to come to life, seeking revenge on those who defiled the tomb. The heroes fend off the mummy and a villainous thief called the Bat until Flor is kidnapped and brought to the tomb. Popoca attempts to sacrifice Flor like Zochi before her, but is stopped when Dr. Almada rescues her. In desperation, Flor's father seals himself along with the mummy in the tomb forever with a dynamite blast. In the sequel, the Bat kidnaps Flor and uses her to find the tomb. He then steals the cursed items and blackmails Dr. Almada into deciphering the breastplate. When the doctor finishes, the Bat tries to kill him, but is stopped by the Aztec mummy, who throws the Bat into a pit of snakes. Pretty unlucky that that was just lying around. It's also worth mentioning that this snake pit is in the Bat's lair, not at the mummy's tomb or anything. I guess it was just a bad coincidence. So, finally, 25 minutes into the movie, we're done with the recap of the first two movies. And, at only 65 minutes total, that's a crazy amount of time to have wasted. It reminds me of the Gamera films, where there's usually a recap of the previous monster fights, but those are nothing compared to this. At least those movies were released in separate years. That's right, I haven't mentioned yet that these first three Mummy movies were all released in 1957 or 58. The audience had just seen the previous movies a few months prior. That would be like Infinity War 2 showing the whole Wakanda fight again. And, to make matters worse, the film isn't ready to start just yet. First, we need a few more minutes of exposition about what has happened between the last movie and now. Now that I think about it, this is probably just a gag by the filmmakers on us. The plot finally kicks into gear as the Bat uses his hypnosis to convince Floor to lead him to the mummy once more. After realizing what has happened, Dr. Almada and his pal Pinacate try to track down the Bat and are captured while investigating his hideout. Here we get to see what the Doctor has been working on and what makes this movie a standout. The Bat laughs maniacally as he unveils his Frankenstein monster, a cheesy robot with a human head, reanimated from the world of the dead. The film then cuts between our colorful cast of characters, discount Vincent Price, Acid Face, the Mad Doctor, and the robot, until the behemoth breaks free from his plastic chains. The Bat then reveals his ultimate plan, an army of robots, but first, he needs money. That's where the Aztec treasure comes in. If only the robot can defeat the mummy and steal his riches. In a finale for the history books, the robot and the Aztec mummy chest bump each other to death, until the mummy proves that magic beats science once and for all, by destroying the robot and his evil creator with it. 
reunited with his stolen treasure, the mummy shambles out into the darkness. Facing off against our first movie is its spiritual sequel, The Wrestling Women vs. The Aztec Mummy, a reimagination of the series produced six years later. After a complete and satisfying first trilogy, the original cast leaves for a new set of protagonists, featuring some female wrestlers and a new villain, the Black Dragon Gang, and their pair of female judo fighters. I bet you can see where this is going. This movie embraces the campiness a little bit more, often feeling more like a Scooby-Doo episode than a horror movie. The key to the mummy's treasure is now a codex, a puzzle split into several pieces that the characters fight over in a series of wacky hijinks. This, along with the wrestling, makes the movie less scary than the previous film, although that isn't a high hurdle to clear. The movie follows a new doctor, Dr. Tracy, and his friends as they discover the secrets of the Aztecs. At least, that's what he's called in the English version I watch. One obvious problem with dubbing the movie for an American audience is that artifacts from the original movie, like this sign, mess up the film's logic. After an opening scene featuring some wrestling, the plot kicks into gear, when a Dr. Sorba tells the two wrestlers that he's in danger. Sorba is poisoned by the Black Dragon Gang, who are intent on finding the secrets discovered by Sorba and his colleague Dr. Tracy. The wrestlers and their fiancés race to Dr. Tracy to find out. Unfortunately, our group gets the wrong address and end up at Dr. Tres. Uh, just kidding. This is one of the side effects of redubbing this Mexican film into English. If I were one of the editors, I might have omitted just a few frames, but oh well. Once the group meets up with Tres, the movie becomes a Scooby-Doo mystery. One of the group, Charlotte, is hypnotized. They split up and go their own ways, and the bad guys steal a piece of the codex. I was waiting on the musical section, but it never comes. The bad guys then have a brilliant idea. Let the good guys do all the work. They spy on the heroes who have deciphered the codex with typical 1950s wireless cameras, revealing the history of the Aztec mummy and the location of his tomb. The breastplate, Zochi, the curse, and the Aztec treasure from the older movies are now back. The professor and the crew travel to the tomb where they retrieve the breastplate and evade the mummy, who looks surprisingly scary. It was an odd scene transition to see the group back in the house without a scratch after finding the mummy. Normally, the climax of the movie would be in the tomb with the mummy killing people off. Instead, the heroes begin to study the breastplate as the Black Dragon gang begins preparations to steal it. Before the Black Dragons can take it, they are killed by the mummy, who oddly enough has vampire powers. He can turn into a bat and flees the scene upon seeing the sunrise. That's pretty good luck for our heroes. They decide to return the necklace, but lose Charlotte in the tomb. The group makes a rescue attempt, leading to the final confrontation with the mummy. Here we learn the mummy can also become a spider. This is probably my favorite mummy power set. Unfortunately, there is no more wrestling and the mummy is just tied up as the tomb collapses. Kind of anticlimactic. I was hoping for the mummy to get taken down with some wrestling moves. In this regard, the wrestling women versus the Aztec mummy doesn't quite deliver on its name. Withholding the crazy mummy transformations and the scarier mummy design, the robot versus the Aztec mummy delivers more absurdity with the ridiculously entertaining final fight and the antics of the bat, who serves as a much better villain than the Black Dragon Gang. Additionally, the mummy gets a lot more screen time in RVA due to the clip show at the beginning. The winner, in my opinion, is the robot versus the Aztec mummy, which is both a good introduction to the Aztec mummy franchise and the home of one of the strangest fights in movie history.